So question three. Roots of a polynomial. Given this root, find the other roots and then plot them in a map and diagram. Well, first thing would be this. If you know one complex root, then straight away you know the other. Well, I'll just write this again. If negative one plus two i is a root, that means that negative one is conjugate, whoops, in McDaisy, minus two i is also a root. So it's two of the roots. Plus, if you've got an odd powered polynomial, you know that the graph of that has to start with a positive first term. It has to start below, do however many terms it take, in this case it's just two, and then pass above. It's got to pass through the axis. There's got to be a real root. If you could find that third root without all this messing about and finding quadratic factors, simply by doing a wee quick synthetic division. 1, 5, 11, 15, find a number that works, and there's your remaining root. You've got that one, that one immediately conjugate, and then that one. However, I'll go through the technique that maybe they're expecting, which would be this. Given two roots, you could reconstruct the quadratic factor that produced it. But again, there's a quicker way to do that rather than do this. I'll put this down and then just rub it out. Rather than saying, oh, well, I've got the factor x minus 1 plus 2i and the factor x minus negative 1 minus 2i and then multiply them out by having all nine products to x times x and x times 1 and x times 2i blah 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 and so on and then gather that all together because there's a simple pattern especially with these complex conjugate pairs for establishing the quadratic that would result from the product of these two factors which is this if you've got a pair of brackets like that with roots a and b, multiplying that out would give you x squared minus alpha minus beta minus alpha plus beta x, I know I'm using x's and not z's, plus alpha beta, which simply says the quadratic that would result from that, that pair of brackets would be the middle coefficient would be the sum of the roots, the end, co the end number well, this is the absolute coefficient, the end number would be the product of the roots. Now that's especially easy for complex conjugate pairs because the sum of the roots, since they're plus and minus, the imaginary parts will disappear, so it'll just be the sums of the first two numbers. And the product of them is equally easy because you've got a pair of numbers multiplying each other. That's the difference of two squares, but because of the i's, it actually becomes the sum of the two squares. Instead of one squared minus two squared, it's one squared plus two squared. So it becomes especially easy to reconstruct that factor from the roots. So what will I put down for my working? Well, I could just put down my synthetic division, find a number that works, and there I have, I've got all three answers. But what I'll do, I think I'll reconstruct my quadratic factor. So I'll reconstruct the quadratic factor because that was that fundamental theorem that any polynomial can be factorised down to products of quadratic, irreducible quadratic factors and linear factors. So this would be the irreducible quadratic factor that then had to break into these complex parts. So for that I would have simply this. I would have z squared minus the sum of the roots. So that's negative one and negative one. That's negative two z because the plus two i and the minus two i cancel out. Plus the product of the roots, well that will just be 1 squared and 2 squared. So that means the quadratic factor is z squared plus 2z plus 5. And then if you will, you could find the remaining linear factor by dividing that into that. That would do, do your division at the side. Or you could just use your synthetic division. Or you could just say, well there's one more factor to find. So you could put it down this way, you could say, I've got one more factor. I'll just call it alpha, I know how alpha is, but they've gone now. So you can be called alpha now. I've got one more factor to go, but you're a z. And that would be z squared plus 2z plus 5. That should make that expression here. I can't bother writing it down. I'll just call it 1. And if that's the case, or maybe I should write it down, which equals z cubed plus 5z squared plus 11z plus 15. If that's the case, then 5 alpha must make 15 which means alpha must be 3. So that would be my final factorisation. I'd have z plus 3 times that irreducible quadratic, which I already know the results from. So it becomes that equals 0. So that means my roots are going to be z1, I'll call it, is negative 3. z2, I'll take this one, negative 1 plus 2i. z3, negative 1 
minus 2i. There. <coughs> Almost missed that bit. Plot the roots on an argan diagram. <coughs> well, argan diagram, argan diagram just means like a normal coordinate diagram. It's just like an extension of the number line. The real numbers go along here, just like in real numbers. You've got the number line, it's got zero in the middle, but you can only step along, it's one dimensional step back. It's almost like having a plane where all you can see is the real part, and then you tip the plane, and the imaginary part of it then extends towards and away from you. So you've got the real part there, you've got the imaginary part there, so you plot them. So negative three would be here on the real part. So that'd be Z1 at negative three. Negative one plus two i, that'd be one back at negative one, but two steps up away in the plane. Looking along the real line, all you would see would be a negative one. So there's Z2, I'll just put a wee mark there, that's negative one and that's two. And Z3, same distance the opposite way. Negative one, negative two. So there's Z3, I'll put a negative two there. Again, if all you do was looking along the real plane, all you would spot would be two numbers, a negative three and a negative one. Right, there's the numbers plotted in the, the, sorry, the roots plotted.